right, now to a very closely watched and controversial case, the lawsuit by Sofia Vergara's former fiance, Nick Loeb, over two frozen embryos created while they were still a couple. In a moment, Nick Loeb will speak out in a Today Live exclusive, but Hoda is here with more. Hi, guys. This started off as a very private battle that has gone very, very public after Loeb wrote an op-ed in the New York Times saying, quote, our frozen embryos have a right to live. Sophia, a lot of people think that not bringing the embryo to completion is murder. Any comment? On Wednesday, a smiling Sofia Vergara arrived at LAX with her fiancé, Joe Manganiello. Sofia, anything Nick can do or say to, 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 to get that embryo? No. Oh! Where she brushed off and bumped into members of the paparazzi, asking about her battle with former fiancé, Nick Loeb. I forgive, you, I, for, I forgive you for bumping into me, though. In his New York Times op-ed, Loeb wrote, In my view, keeping them frozen forever is tantamount to killing them. He wants to implant the embryos in a surrogate and raise the children himself. One place she did talk about her ex was with Howard Stern, who, of course, went there. You guys break up, and you say, look, I don't want to have a baby with you. I'm not involved with you anymore. Can you blame me? I can't blame you. <laughs> I, and by the way, a child needs a mother. A mother and a loving, and a, more than a mother, it needs a loving relationship of parents, you know, that get along, that don't hate each other, that, I mean, You I, hate I, each I, other now? Well, I don't hate him, but obviously he has a problem with me. <laughs> Vergara breaking her silence on Loeb. My advice would be go out and find a girl of and course. make a family, yeah. yes? No, and you know what? It's like the th I, I totally understand him, but the thing is this, that fortunately and unfortunately, there is law. You wrote, you, you, you sign papers, legal papers, and he... If it was so serious for him, this issue, which I totally respect if it's serious for someone, then you should have taken it more serious at the so time, like I did. All right. And Nick Loeb is with us now. Nick, good morning. Good morning. Thank All you right, for having let's, me. Let's talk with that agreement. I mean, as it was stated, you each signed an agreement saying neither of you would bring this embryo to term without the other's consent. I mean, it, it sort of seems like a dead issue at this point, is it? So we actually signed these forms, you know, way at the very beginning before all the processes happened. Mm -hmm. You know, none of the forms really discussed what would happen in the event of a separation. They all had to do with whether we were together. And so after we signed the forms, we actually went through the process of, you know, going through in vitro, creating life, mm -hmm. putting it to a surrogate once. We then put it into a surrogate again a second time. We went through the process again uh, to create new lives, and then we went... And my thought was we would do it again with a, mm -hmm. a surrogate again. There was no really thought of, well, now she's going to change her mind, and now we're not going to do it. I always assumed with our agreement that we are going to agree to take these terms. Let's talk about the perception. Here's the perception. Sure. Sophia Vergara, a beautiful actress. She's about to get married. She's starting this new life, very successful. She doesn't want to have a child with her ex. You are perceived as the guy who cannot let go of a relationship. She wants to move on. I have tremendous respect for Sophia. She's been very successful. She's very smart. You know, you know, we filed this back in October. This is not something that is new. This has nothing to do with this at all. This has to do with bigger, really moral, you know, legal, ethical uh, concepts that are out there about lives that we've already created. It has nothing to do with anything else. Mm -hmm. Now, you said this in the New York Times. For as long as I can remember, I've dreamed of being a parent. Okay, I want to ask you a very, very important question. Do you want to have a baby, or do you want to have her baby? It, it has nothing to do whether that her baby or a baby. Lives were already created. You know, we created, I mean, a lot of the questions is why don't you move on and, and meet somebody else? And, and no doubt I would love to do that, but it doesn't matter that two lives have already been created. I wouldn't just toss them aside no different than a, a child that had been born. Okay, let's pretend, for, you're 39 years old, let's pretend sure. you meet a girl tomorrow. You fall madly in love and you say, let's have a baby. Is it possible that this whole issue would go away if that were the case? No, absolutely not. This has nothing to do with one woman over another woman. This has to do with the two lives that we've already created that already exist, that are, that are two female embryos. Let me ask you this. Okay, so let's pretend Sophia came to you and say, said, okay, Joe Manganella and I, we want to take those embryos. We want to have these babies. Would you be okay with that? As long as I was involved in the parental process. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously no different than if we had children and I separated, 
we would have joint custody and they would obviously spend time raising the child and I would spend time raising the child. No different than millions of Americans out there today. Nick, a lot of people look at this timing and they say this timing is so weird. All right. The op-ed comes out right at the very time that Sophia is promoting this movie. She's on the red carpet. She's doing all that kind of stuff. And then, boom, this comes out. It looks sort of like a publicity thing. Sure. You want press. Sure. Unfortunately, I didn't even come out with the story to begin with. It was leaked to the press. There was comments made by her team in the press, and I felt that I needed to come out and correct the record. Mm -hmm. I submitted the op-ed to the New York Times a week before it even went out. I have no control when the New York Times prints their op-eds. Right. One of the things I found interesting, like we were all asking, like, why did you sign this thing? And I was looking through your complaint, and this I found this interesting. It says... There, there's talk of abuse here. For example, you say, she physically abused him on four separate occasions. She punched him in the face on two occasions, kicked him and threw her phone at his head. She also routinely bullied him, called him a loser, worthless, and other degrading names. You, accordingly, you say, sign this portion of the form directive, even though he did not agree with it, in order to avoid further abuse. I got to tell you, I, I was reading this, this complaint for the first time last night, and I read this part, and I said, oh, my God, what was going on there? So what was going on? Well, you know, I, I really came here to talk about, you know, really the deal with these with the embryos, the yeah. lies we're creating. You know, I think Sophia, you know, is a wonderful, wonderful woman. I really don't want to sit here and talk about, you know, our personal issues that we had in our relationship, because I don't think that's fair to her. Uh, we're both going through a very tough time right now with this. She said on Howard Stern, she said, a child needs a loving relationship, parents that get along and don't hate each other. Do, do, well, you know, she, she said she didn't hate you. Right. How do you feel I, about I, her? I, I don't hate her at all. Yeah. And, you know, there's 20 million single parents in this world. And, I, you know, I think they're all working really hard to bring children. So I don't think there's anything wrong with being a single father, a single mother, raising a child in America today. Mm-hmm. Any financial motivation, Nick? Because I think people are going, well, why would he be doing this? Like, what's the deal? Uh, not only do I not have any financial motivation, I've offered her to waive all res financial responsibilities. Uh, I'll financially pay to raise this child, put her through college. I mean, I can give these children a wonderful life. I mean, and these girls will be raised knowing that they have a father who fought so hard for them that they'll know they'll be loved so much. You can understand as a, as a, as a mother, as from Sophia's perspective, you wouldn't want to have children walking around because inevitably they're going to say, who's our mom? And you're going to say, oh, it's the lady over there on, on television. Um, it, does that not put her in a position where she sort of has to agree in some sense? Well, I, I've let it open to her. If she yeah. wants to be involved, if she doesn't want to be involved, either one is okay with me. You know, I want these children to have the best lives possible. So wh whatever makes everybody happier, but there's, there's nothing I want to do more than bring these children to life. I mean, they're already alive. They're on a journey and a pathway to being born. Why, why go the other way? And we're talking about equal rights. Why err on the side of death? We should be always erring on the side of life, especially when life's already been created. Yeah. All right, Nick Loeb. So there's a court date or some kind of hearing on the 22nd of May, so we'll know more then? Yes, that is. All right, Nick. Thanks so much. Thanks Thank for joining so much, us. We Anna. appreciate it. Appreciate Guys, it. back to you. Hello today, fans. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking that button down there and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives.